So I'm Danae Kutra, I'm an assistant professor in computer science and engineering. And today I'll be talking about the work of my group on mining large-scale network data. So there is no question that we are generating more and more data every day. And one cool thing about this data is that it is often interconnected. We are not acting in isolation, but we are interacting with each other and the world around us. And these interactions can be captured naturally in what we call networks or graphs. So networks are really everywhere. And even right now, as you're absorbing information that I'm sharing with you, there are co-activations in your brain. And we could get, if you were um, under fMRI, we could get your brain uh, functional graph. Or maybe some of you are responding to email right now, contributing to an email network, or uh, checking on the web, um, right? And you get responses through the knowledge graph. Um, so all these interactions can be captured in these structures. Um, entities correspond to nodes, and interactions between them correspond to edges between them. Now, what is exciting um, about these types of data in my research is that they're very, very big. They're growing quickly. So in a lot of cases, those networks have millions or billions of entities and interactions between them. So we really need scalable computational methods that can help us handle this type of data, this size, and get insights into the, into the networks and the underlying processes. Now, on the other side of the coin, there are also what we call multi-network problems. Problems in which we have maybe thousands of networks, which are small or medium in size. And one uh, problem that has inspired my work is the um, ABCD project, the Adolescent Brain Cognitive Development pro uh, Project, where Michigan participates in. And what we're doing is we're tracking um, kids over time. So we get their functional networks, the, brain, uh, the functional brain networks over time, along with other psychological factors. And we want to understand mental development. Right? And this is one case where we have 10,000 of these time-evolving networks that we want to analyze collectively. In other cases, we may want to summarize a network, a massive network with a smaller presentation so that we can run algorithms faster on those. And we may want to perform the summarization with respect to a domain in which we may have more networks, like social networks. Um, and another problem that falls in this category is data fusion. Right? We may want to combine multiple sources um, so that we can analyze them together. And we also um, may want to perform classification. Right, find patients and non-patients uh, if the patients are represented with graphs. So the goal of my group is to develop efficient computational methods that can help us make sense of these large data sets uh, and identify the right questions to ask next. So my research area, which is graph mining, falls in the intersection between AI and machine learning, databases, and statistics. And applications that we're looking into range all the way from social networks and communication networks to knowledge graphs to real neural networks and artificial neural networks. So if I go one step lower, what we are doing is we're developing methods, scalable methods for multi-source analysis. And we start from fusing data sources, relating them, and summarizing patterns in them. So I started this talk by telling you, hey, there are a lot of graphs out there. The truth is that some of these graphs we don't readily observe. We may be getting observations that seem to be unrelated to each other, but in reality, there are um, some relationships that we want to capture in the form of a graph. Um, so one direction that my group investigates is network inference for non-network data. And this comes up a lot in scientific domains, such as neuroscience, finance, climate science, and so on. Usually, there we have time series that we want to find the correlations between. Another direction that we look into is how we can fuse, how we can combine multiple data sources. Um, and how can we compare them, right? So that we can analyze the new richer data sources collectively. 
And once we have very large networks uh, that are either observed uh, readily out there or we have gone by combining multiple data sources, the next natural question is, okay, what are the patterns in there? What should we pay attention to? What is important? And the approach that we take is summarization. We try to summarize the patterns in these graphs and we have proposed a lot of different instances of um, summarization for network data, ranging from domain specific to personalized uh, to latent summaries and so on. And one aspect that I'm quite excited about these days is how we can leverage summarization to enable on-device computing and give privacy guarantees. Now, along all these axes, um, we care about scaling up our methods. We want to be able to handle very large data sets. So we look into ways of scaling up graph methods in distributed settings in addition to um, serial. And on this side, for fun, we do explore some data science projects. Um, one recent project that we looked into was uh, the career trajectories of PhDs in CS. Uh, and if there is one thing to take away from that one for this audience is that we see increasing collaboration between industry and academia these days. And I'm hoping that the symposium will foster even more of these collaborations within institutions and across institutions. So let me talk a little bit more about um, some of the work that we have done in uh, fusing and comparing data sources. So first of all, why do we care? Why do we want to align network data? The reason is that there are a lot of different applications of align network alignment in a lot of different disciplines. So there are over 200 papers that are tackling different instances of this problem, all the way from entity resolution to chemical compound comparison to entity extraction or synonym extraction to translation to matching structures in the database and so on. So the traditional formulation for solving this problem is to um, use an optimization. So what we're saying is, let's find a way to change a bit one graph so that it best matches another one. And then this is what the equation I have up there shows. Um, a corresponds to the first graph, B corresponds to the second one. But essentially we want to minimize their distances. But this has several drawbacks. Um, one, um, it, it can be computationally expensive to solve this optimization problem, um, and there are a lot of different variants of this with different relaxations and constraints. Um, and another problem is that we have to tailor the optimization to the problem at hand. So if we have additional information about the graphs, let's say there is side information somewhere, we have attributes for people, then we have to update it to take that into account. If we have different sizes of graphs, then we cannot just readily apply this formulation. So our approach to this was inspired by the success of representation learning um, in various domains within machine learning and AI. And we said, okay, can we learn representations of entities or nodes in graphs and then match the ones that are most similar to each other? And um, this sounds easy, right? We learn representations in one graph uh, and another one, we combine, we say that the entities that have similar representations across are the ones that match. However, this has challenges. If you take any representation learning approach that exists, and you apply it on one graph and then another and try to compare them, it's like comparing apples and oranges, right? So we need to make sure that the representation that we have translates or generalizes across networks. And the other challenge is scalability. A lot of methods in representation learning depend on deep learning architectures with, which don't scale in um, very large graphs, at least not easily. So um, there are two key ideas that we use to tackle this problem. We have, let's say, two networks that we want to find the alignment between the nodes. Uh, the first idea is to capture structure of the networks and labels, which transfer across networks. So we'll come up with representations that are based on these two aspects. And the second idea is to not use deep learning or other approaches that are computationally expensive, but take advantage of the fact that a lot of them essentially correspond to 
factorization of some matrix. And we say, let's not even use matrix factorization off the shelf, let's try to perform that implicitly, which gives us even more speed up. Um, so that's the way that we achieve scalability. And then once we get the representations, we just align them to find the correspondence. So with these two key ideas, what we're able to do is find um, more accurate alignments between networks uh, than traditional approaches. And uh, we achieved that with 22 to 31 times uh, speed up compared to representation learning approaches that are based on uh, deep learning architectures. Um, the other key insight that we got, and I guess this also inspired this direction of work, uh, was that structure transfers and structural embeddings can help us with these multi-network tasks, while proximity-based ones um, don't. So um, we have further extended this work to uh, align multiple networks at once. Uh, and here the idea is, let's again, avoid computationally expensive steps, um, and we rely on hashing and transitive mapping to do that. And we have even gone beyond graphs uh, to align relational data sets. Um, so this is in collaboration with colleagues here in the database group, where we wanted to uh, be able to align, let's say, tables that may have incompatible units. Let's say the geographic location in one table is based on zip codes, another one is based on county. How can we merge those so that we can answer important socioeconomic questions um, when the units um, in which the data sets were collected are incompatible? And since this is an AI for Society symposium, I want to also mention the work here with the Michigan Data Science team. Um, where this is a student-led organization, and um, myself, Professor Weens, and Professor Swords are advisors for this team, and we're working on projects partnering with the city of Detroit, um, helping them understand, for instance, vehicle fleet um, maintenance patterns and how to drive the cost down, and there was also a very successful project on Flint water crisis and helping that. So with that, I would like to thank you for listening. These are my PhD students, and I'm happy to take any questions.